I come before you and assume the presidency. He was just a, such a good person, such a fine man. I want a kinder and gentler nation. He always had time for everyone. Love being president. Love working at trying to help people and do help solve problems. He was a great president, great human being. Our nation is mourning the loss of its 41st president, George H.W. Bush. This is News 3 at 10. Flags are flying at half staff across Wisconsin tonight in honor of former President George H.W. Bush. He passed away yesterday at his home in Houston at the age of 94. The former president had experienced some health problems in the last few years of his life, problems which became worse after his wife Barbara died in April. He's described as a kind man who spent his entire life loving his family and serving his country. The former president's memory is living on in the connections he's made many here in Wisconsin. Our Madeline O'Neill sat down with a former executive director to the state's Republican Party, who is fondly remembering the times he shared with George H.W. Bush. I will faithfully execute the office of president of the United States. If you didn't know he was president, you wouldn't assume so. He was the nicest, kindest man. Brandon Scholes should know. He was involved in almost every one of George H.W. Bush's trips to Wisconsin when he was president. He was quick with a handshake and, and wanted to know who you were and what you did. As There's an no executive state. director to the state's Republican Party and then chief of staff to Congressman Scott Klug, his path crossed with Bush's before, during, and after 41's presidential campaign. We were all a lot younger then. From train rides to Mother's Day events. They're just great memories. These are the memories Scholes is cherishing today. Oh, I was sad. After I learning was, of Bush's I, death Friday night. I said, oh my, it's just such a great loss. Scholes is mourning the loss of a president, veteran, and public servant. That's all he did was to serve, and to serve as honorably and as honestly as he possibly could. And I mean, I'm lucky that I got to meet him. I'm lucky that I was able to work for him and to do events and, and be a part of what he was, what he did when he came to Wisconsin. So I'll always remember that. Especially today, as he's holding those memories close. I will never be sad when I, when I think about them or I think about the events that we had. I'll always be happy. In Madison, Madeline O'Neill, WISC News 3. Politicians are using social media to post tributes to Bush. Governor Scott Walker called Bush a true gentleman and says he cast his first vote for president for him in 1988. Former Wisconsin Governor Tommy Thompson served as governor during Bush's presidency and went on to serve in his son's administration. He said Bush was a good friend who he worked closely with on many positive reforms. Wisconsin Senator Tammy Baldwin says she respects Bush's commitment to service, saying his humility and kindness serve as an example for all who follow him in public service. Former President Barack Obama says America lost a patriot and humble servant while talking about Bush's 70 years of service to our country. Like Madison, many other communities and cities across the country have flags flying at half staff. This is video of the flags at our nation's capital. Americans will observe a day of mourning on Wednesday, something President Trump announced today. These days are typically given to a select few, usually presidents in the United States, and involve memorial activities and ceremonies. The New York Stock Exchange and the NASDAQ plan to close on Wednesday as well. Dozens of people are walking along the coast in Maine, leaving flowers, wreaths, and American flags outside the Bush compound in the state. The Bush compound was their summer home and has been in the family since the late 19th century. George H.W. spent part of many summers growing up along the coast and even invited several world leaders to that family home. Today, we learned that Bush will lie in state at the U.S. Capitol before a memorial service at the National Cathedral in D.C. A second memorial service will be at St. Martin's Episcopal Church in Houston, and Bush will be laid to rest at his presidential library in College Station, Texas, alongside his wife. Make sure to stay with News 3 as the country continues to honor former President George H.W. Bush. We'll be sharing more tributes on News 3 Sunday morning and online at channel3000.com. Well, today was kind of a dreary start to December. Let's take a live look right now in downtown Madison where we saw 
a rainy gray day today. Let's turn it over to Dave Caulfield. Dave, I know you were just outside. You were excited to see some of the things out there. Yeah, some big changes uh, to our weather over the past hour or so, Amanda. We really have been dealing with rain much of the day for most of southern Wisconsin. However, we've noticed a bit of a changeover in some spots, and that includes across Dane County on our weather patio at around 930. We were seeing a mix of rain, snow and sleet. Now some moderate sleet is falling and and that's it. And you could see kind of that changeover from rain to snow happening over the last couple of scans or so. So that's significant temperatures cooling down a little bit over the last hour. We'll have to watch that closely and we could be dealing with some slick roads overnight if that sleet keeps falling on the Edgewater sky cam, some patchy fog and also some rain and sleet coming down. Temperatures have fallen a couple of degrees and really a few degrees can make a big difference in a weather situation like this. Wind speed is still about 15 to 25 miles per hour out of the north and east gusting to about 35. So the ugly weather kind of continues overnight and then as we head into tomorrow, some snowflakes are possible. We'll talk about possible totals for southern Wisconsin by the time we get to Monday in your first alert forecast in just a few minutes. Thank you, Dave. Some Illinois residents are cleaning up after a December tornado. A number of tornadoes touched down in the central part of the state. Several homes and businesses in the region were damaged. It's still unclear if anyone is hurt. First responders are out assessing the damage and we'll share more once we learn more details. The Federal Transportation Department is releasing $5 million in emergency relief funds to help fix bridges and roads in Alaska. The state experienced a 7.0 earthquake yesterday. There were no deaths reported, but some buildings in the Anchorage area received minor damage and highways near the city received major damage. The $5 million is essentially seen as a down payment to help fund short term repairs while assessments are made for those bigger projects. Funeral services were held today for the man killed during a shooting at an Alabama mall. The Reverend Jesse Jackson delivered the eulogy at today's service. 21 year old Amantic Fitzgerald Bradford was shot Thanksgiving night at a mall near Birmingham by police. Authorities initially identified him as the shooter, but later said they were wrong and evidence indicated he likely did not fire the rounds that hurt two others that night. Bradford's death has caused a week of protests near Birmingham. At least two people are out of their homes tonight after a fire on Madison's west side. Firefighters were called to a home on offshore drive overnight. A garage and pop up camper were on fire. No one was hurt, but it's still unclear what caused that fire. Police hope someone has information on a missing Dodge County teen. Beaver Dam police say 17 year old Kirsten Duarte has been missing for a month. They're asking anyone who has had contact with her to call them. A little boy from Cottage Grove is recovering after choking on a toy. Kate's mom shared a photo of him in the hospital where he underwent surgery. The post thanked first responders with the Deer Grove EMS and Cottage Grove Police Department. The mom says Cade put a toy cucumber in his mouth and began to choke. She thanks those responding for staying calm while saving her son's life. The post was shared by the Cottage Grove Police Department. Fewer people in Wisconsin are signing up for health insurance through the Affordable Care Act. Around 62,000 people are enrolled in health plans this year. This number is behind last year's total, which was around 78,000. Local governments and nonprofits like the United Way are ramping up their efforts to help people register for health coverage. There are about two weeks left this year to openly enroll. As Forward Madison soccer season ticket holders pick out their seats today, Bree Stevens Stadium still has some work to be done. Chris Lundberg shares what this all means for Madison's landmark stadium. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll be I'll be over there looking here, so it's, we're going to have a great view of everything. When Forward Madison Soccer Club's first season kicks off, Matt Line knows where he's going to be. What I'm most excited about is definitely the supporters end, to have a team that we can come out for every weekend and just... Um, really get excited about and get behind. He even knows exactly in the stands where he'll be sitting to watch every penalty punt and play. But no, I, I'm expecting filled stadiums. I'm expecting, you know, packed houses. But for a day that's all about picking out seats, it's a bit strange that some are still missing, but they won't be for long. We can take a, a facility that was sitting here and um, 
really kind of an eyesore and not being maintained and really kind of turn it around and make it something that people are excited to use. Madison's Park Superintendent Eric Knepp says that while construction on bleachers and a new concession stand is beginning, a proposal for a new hospitality section on top of the concession stand is still under review. It's a national landmark. It's a valued park asset. We've uh, went through a number of approval processes. Nep says that these changes will bring the field closer to its full potential. It's exciting to see Breeze used and loved, and, and I really believe that if you want to preserve landmarks, you need to give them purpose and purpose for for as many people as you can. The new phase of improvements would put the total city investment in Breeze Stevens to almost $7 million. For line, though, all that matters is that the city will be there for the team, win or lose. To see this, this historic venue um, kind of evolve and become, you know, the focus for professional sports in Madison is going to be very cool. For News 3, I'm Chris Lewinberg. Madison's Urban Design Commission will review the new improvements for the final OK this Wednesday. Officials say all the improvements may not be ready by Forward Madison's first season, but the facility will be usable. There's a fun event going on around Madison for comic book and television fans. This week is the fourth annual Madison Wizard World Convention. There are vendors, activities, and of course, some of your favorite celebrities. The convention is a way to bring everyone together, and that fun continues tomorrow at the Alliant Energy Center's Exhibition Hall from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. General admission is $50, but kids under 10 are free. A powerful moment, the first of its kind at a local hospital. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Hospital staff honor a man choosing to give the gift of life. The peace this walk of respect is providing to grieving families. That's next at 10.
Losing a loved one can be very hard, but a Janesville family is finding comfort through a new hospital program. Adam Duxter shares how a walk of honor is helping them through this difficult time. Adam. Well, Amanda Graham Smith was a husband and a father, but thanks to his sacrifice, his life's legacy will carry on long past long past the time he's gone. Amazing grace. A special tribute to the man who loved life and made the decision to give the gift of life. Graham Smith is remembered for always helping others. He was always lending a hand to people when they needed it, so he was just a good guy that way. Something he continued even after he was gone. Graham suffered a brain aneurysm this week, passing away at 48. And I got a phone call from my husband's coworker. Um, he was meeting up with her, and he was not feeling well, and he collapsed in her kitchen. Leaving behind his wife Kelly and his two children. He was my, you know, the love of my life. But Graham's story isn't over. His legacy is living on through a decision he made years before. We want to talk to you about organ donation. Is that something you've ever thought about? And I'm like, I absolutely, I know that that would be something that he would want and I would want. And she's like, well, I'm so glad to hear you say that because he is a registered donor. Graham's choice is going to save four other people. You know? is this is really difficult for us. But easing the pain for his family. But think of how happy these other families are going to be that they're gonna have their loved ones with them. A thank you that SSM plans to continue for others choosing to give the gift of life. That honor walk, the first of its kind. And now Kelly Smith is urging those who haven't already to go online and register to become an organ donor. And you can find a link to do just that on our website, channel3000.com. All right, Adam, thank you so much for that story. Well, we've had some different weather events, a lot of different things happening today. Yeah, just in the couple state area around us, we've had violent tornadoes in Illinois, some heavy sleet across portions of southern Wisconsin, snow to our north, and really it's all because of the same storm system. You can just see how massive this thing is. At one time, the weather across 28 states was affected by, in some way, shape, or form, by this same storm system. We'll zoom in so we can see what's going on. Actually, we had some reports over the last couple of hours of thunder sleet, so thunderstorms while sleet was happening across western Dane County. The thunder threat has really diminished over the past hour, but the sleet threat has not, that's for sure. We did have some ice uh, fall over the last 15 to 20 minutes in Madison on our weather patio, and it's really going to be a game of inches in a game of just a few degrees, whether or not we see that changeover in spots overnight. So we could have some slippery roads as we start off our Sunday. Remember when we were talking about this, the two time periods we were concerned about Saturday morning, which we got through pretty much unscathed and also Sunday morning. So we'll have to watch for some slippery conditions there. 24 hour precipitation estimates, multiple areas, especially over the last hour across Dane County of about an inch to two inches of precipitation. Here's what it looked like earlier in Madison on the WIC TV sky cam. We had the clouds with us, some light rain and lots and lots of wind out of the east and we can see that rain and sleet still falling on our tower camera at our station just outside. Temperatures are in the mid 30s, but this can be a little bit deceiving. Which the good news is ground temperatures are still a little bit above freezing, so it's going to be tough for a lot of this to cause slippery conditions quickly. However, as this is falling, it's cooling the air around it, and that is taking what's showing up on radar as rain and kind of transforming it into sleet or frozen precipitation for some of us. That wind not really calming down throughout the day, although it's a little bit better than the 35 to 45 mile per hour gusts we were dealing with earlier. Tonight, mostly cloudy rain, maybe some freezing rain and sleet as well with some patchy fog. Tomorrow, that rain changes over to snow. It will be breezy during the afternoon and evening, so future track 
showing some dry periods overnight, but also the chance of seeing some mixed precipitation. Then by tomorrow morning, we slowly are changing over to snow. This is going to be that slushy snow that can fall rather quickly, but the good news is it gets out of here rather quickly by the time we get to Sunday night and Monday morning. Not talking about too much in the way of snow totals unless you head to the north and west of Madison. We could be dealing with about two to three inches of snow in those areas. Quick look at your seven to ten day forecast. We are calming down significantly and I think we deserve that as we head into next week. Temperatures staying in the 20s. Couple of snowflakes possible Thursday and Friday. All right. Thank you so much, Dave. It's a fun and healthy way to kick off the holiday season. Five, four, three. Ah! 2,500 people participated in the Run Santa Run. Despite today's rain, some runners had a little fun dressing like Santa and sporting other holiday gear. The best part of today's race is it raised money for Make-A-Wish Wisconsin. Around $4,500 was donated to that organization. The Badgers men's hockey team wins big tonight. Highlights from the Cole Center coming up next in sports.
Well, the Packers making some moves ahead of tomorrow's game against the Cardinals. Get ready for some Jake Kumaro. He's officially been activated to the roster. Meanwhile, Mike Daniels and Trevor Davis both on injured reserve now. Kickoff tomorrow at noon at Lambeau. And speaking of Jake Kumaro, his alma mater, UW Whitewater, in the NCAA Division III quarterfinals this afternoon. Now, Jake's younger brother, Derek, is currently a wide receiver for the Warhawks as well. Whitewater hosting Bethel University from Minnesota and some not so great conditions at Perkins Stadium. First half of action here. Hand off to Ronnie Ponick. One of his two touchdowns on the day, 9-0 to zero Warhawks. Later, Bethel trying to get rid of it. Kind of slippery out there, like we said, with the weather. Whitewater the block and then recovery. So they've got the ball. On the ensuing drive, Alex Pete shoving his way through the pack there. That is a touchdown. Warhawks opening up the lead 23 to zip. They hang on 26 to 12 to win and remain perfect. They're 13 and 0 on the season. They'll face Mary Harden Baylor in the semifinals next week. And head coach Kevin Bullis couldn't be more proud of the hard work and effort from his guys. The thing that's terribly exciting about it is how hard both these teams how hard these kids work at the Division III level. They don't get money to play this game. They lose money playing this game. They got to leave their summer jobs early. They got to leave internships early. Um, it costs them more money to be a part of this and their passion and their love that they have for this and to see it come to fruition. Love that sentiment there. Well, Badgers women's hockey opening up a series against Syracuse tonight. Tie game with 30 seconds to go in the first. With